Müssen wir den Paul wieder zumachen jetzt, oder? Ich hab, bei mir ist er zu. Ah ja, ich mache ihn mal zu. Okay. <lacht> so, we've got attendees coming. 68, 76. Oh, hier steht jetzt bei mir, you cannot modify the advanced sharing options as these settings are locked by your admin. Mm. Only host. But you are a host. The panelist. Ich kann nicht teilen jetzt, nicht mehr. Mm -hmm. Nee? Nein. Hast du es gerade probiert? Ja. Mm -hmm. dann, ja. Lassen dann lassen wir es auf meinem und ich und du sprichst und, und ich mache ja, weiter, ja. okay? Ist der, ist der Jonathan nicht mehr da? Ich habe den Eindruck, dass nicht. Are you asking for me? Yes. Yeah, I was just I trying to screen share. It doesn't work anymore now. Yeah, if you, you're clicking on the button, at the, the arrow at the side, you don't want to click on that. You want to click on the oh, main right. button. Thank you. All right. And you're live now. So you've got okay. to Yes. Thank, thank you very you much. much. And thank yes. you so much. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I've just uh, noticed we've got 185 people attending right now, which is absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for turning up uh, in, in such large numbers. It's wonderful to see that uh, we've got such an interest in, in this topic. Uh, let's get started. So it's uh, between uh, my, my colleague Marianne and myself. We are sharing today's presentation and I will start the slide now, which hopefully uh, you can all see. We've got over 200 participants now. Brilliant. So, our topic is um, activity-led online language teaching, ideas for community language schools. And uh, in our particular case, this is, and I'm, I'm the, the chair of the Association of German Saturday Schools, and uh, my colleague Marianne Siegfried Brooks is the vice chair, so we do everything jointly. And here is the... Oops, now I can't advance. Yeah, here we are. Um, this is the uh, description of our talk. Um, lockdown closed all community language schools with little warning. However, quite a few of them started straight away with online teaching and have since developed a large variety of language sessions for children and youngsters of all ages. The emphasis of our talk is on having fun keeping in touch and jointly engaging in interesting projects, all of course in the heritage language. Uh, in this talk, Charlotte Schulze and Marianne Siegfried Brooks of the Association of German Saturday Schools present a wealth of ideas and lesson plans for children from two years to their late teens from the network of German Saturday Schools and language clubs. I need to, uh, I wanted to ask you before we do this, and these are our contact details, so please everybody feel very much encouraged to get in touch through the uh, emails or um, website addresses um, where, you know, if you've got questions. First of all, I would like to find out who of you is uh, teaching a community language? I've got a poll out now so you can actually vote hopefully you can see the poll and you can answer yes both the questions are being answered in real time so who's teaching community language already and uh, how, who has used zoom for online teaching before and it's really interesting because in terms of community i'll, I'll make the i'll end the poll now um Most of you have answered it. Let's have a look. Okay, um, I'm sharing the results. Here you go. So uh, for question one, the result is almost exactly 50-50. So half of you are teaching a community language. The other half isn't at this moment, but possibly plans to do so. And then have you used online, uh, Zoom for online teaching before? The majority has actually got Zoom experience, about almost two thirds and one third, third hasn't. So um, that's very interesting to know. Okay, let's move away from this poll and let's get started. It is, there is a time lag in actually 
There we go. Okay, our agenda. First of all, very, very briefly, everything needs to start here. Um, issues of safe, safeguarding, data protection and, and related topics. Um, then very briefly, um, looking at Zoom for virtual um, community language teaching, what this platform has to offer. So, you know, what can we do? And then the main part, of course, is all about activity-led lesson ideas for different age groups. And it's literally covering babies or young, very young toddlers to older teenagers. So this is our plan. This is um, topic one. Before you even start to consider teaching uh, community languages online, you really need to have a very careful thought about um, guidelines for supplementary school teaching remotely and COVID-19 uh, safe reopening of schools. So these kind of things are really essential. We are not going to discuss them at all, but we would like to highlight the National Resource Center for Supplementary Education, NRCSE. Um, those who teach community languages undoubtedly know about this. Um, everybody uh, you know, has to comply by, by these uh, regulations anyway. But if you are moving online, things are changing. There are quite different implications. So it's very important to revisit this area and reconsider everything. Okay, so um, we are focusing on Zoom and I believe that it is currently the most popular um, platform for these kind of um, activities. So what does um, Zoom offer? First of all, it offers video contact with all participants. So that's quite reliable, works quite well. And you can see examples here. Now we are not displaying all 20, 2,220 of you uh, at this moment, but you can easily um, display quite a lot of people without disruption. Um, there is also audio contact. So you can have easy audio contact with everybody. You have got written communication through a chat box, um, which we, we, we you can you can make visible at uh, somewhere on your screen. Um, you can use the shared screen function, which I'm doing right now. I'm sharing my screen with all of you, and that means I can share images, texts, audio files, videos, websites, anything you you can think of. Um, you can also um, annotate whatever is on the screen. So you can use a, a whiteboard to annot annotate um, yourself. You can ask others in the, in the room to annotate whiteboards or other kind of files. So that's very, very handy. You can um, record sessions. That's almost a default session uh, sec uh, sec setting. You can take screenshots, so whatever is present on the screen can be saved and um, shared later on or kept. Um, you can uh, include some sort of animation in the, in the context of games, sorting games and, and things like that. And there are also um, other um, resources available on the internet which you can incorporate in this kind of uh, teaching. So that, that's only, these are only a few things that you can do. Um, you can uh, move on from here. So at this point, I will pass on to Mariana. Okay, I'll just share my screen. Yes, can you see that? Yes. Yes, okay, good. Okay, so hello from me to all, hello to everyone. Um, I would, I can also actually ask you to maybe use the question and answer function and Charlotte will try to answer your questions you might have. Um, I see that some of you have typed in the chat, so you're trying to, to answer questions you, you ask throughout the talk. So I'm um, running um, the Association of German Saturday Schools together with Charlotte, but I'm also running the German Saturday School in Leicester. And I want to share my story or our, our story as a Saturday school with you and how we came to online teaching and how we did it. And I'm just trying to inspire you to do um, in your online teaching or maybe inspire you to start online teaching. So it was March the 19th and we got this phone call 
telling us that we can't use our schoolhouse we are usually in for the German Saturday school and even worse that we um, we couldn't get the money back. So we paid for, for the schoolhouse, we couldn't use it. Obviously it was locked down for everyone. But so we had no choice than really just moving everything online. Um, the problem was we had two days to do that and we are, have 120 children and um, adults as well. So we had a big, big group of students we had to move online. Um, we have 20 teachers and none of us had used Zoom before or had done any um, video lessons of any kind. And so it was an enormous challenge and we, I think we worked day and night. <laughs> we did it somehow. So we went on Zoom, we uh, met each other, we had lots of phone calls, we basically didn't sleep. But we all went live online with 120 students two days later on that Saturday. And lessons weren't great, I guess, but um, we did it and we had enormous support from parents and students, which continued actually all the way through. And I think this, this is something you will also notice probably in your, if you run um, a supplementary school lessons, there's a lot of support um, from, from the communities. And so I just, I'm going to show you um, a few things we did. We actually, so we are back um, in our schoolhouse now since September, but we have then opened a completely online German Saturday school for everyone in the whole of the UK and maybe even from further away. And the school is then now also supported by the, the embassy, uh, the German embassy, and is running really well. And so we have had lots of lots of online teaching in the last half year and lots of experience and um, um, I would like to share with you now. We're teaching absolutely all age ranges so some people might think it's not possible to teach babies online or maybe it's not possible to teach you know eight-year-olds. Our oldest student is actually 79 and she's online, she's in our online lessons as well and she's doing okay um, so we offer lessons for absolutely all ages all the way through and we have um, so most of our students will be bilinguals they would speak german at home for example but some of them are also just beginners they just come and want to learn german we also do um, exam preparation if, if someone wants to take exams so what we've done, we've just basically moved our whole concept as a Saturday school online. So we still do very active lessons. We, the children go to school the whole week long, so they need fun, they need active lessons on Saturdays. And so we're doing arts and crafts, baking, singing, just everything we've really done in our schoolhouse in Leicester, but we've just tried to move everything online and um, had really great feedback for, for the active lessons. So everything we did before, it has just moved to Zoom now. Our, this is our smallest group. So this is a, actually a parent and child group. And obviously the parents are there at all times. Actually, we have all the parents, we ask them to be in the sessions with the children up to the age of about, of about seven or eight. Um, just because the children might lose their Zoom window, they might drop the computer, anything might happen. So you need the parents there at all times. And in this Kuchen, so they're the, the little chicklings. <laughs> and here we would have parents and child. So there's a parent and a child in the session. And it's um, there's a lot of um, social stuff going on. So you talk together and we also, they sing together. And what we found is really nice for the small children. We have a book and we actually just show them a book like this. Maybe you can see me in a small window. And then the children help us to tell a story. So we're very active. And so we don't make PowerPoint presentations for the small children. We are here as a person and we share with them. We connect them a lot and to the parents. Um, for singing, singing works fine. Um, I can see, shall I answer the questions here or? Um, I can maybe, yeah, I'll talk about the materials. I'll try to pick some of your, your questions as well. 
So for singing, um, they love, the children love it when I take my guitar and sing with them. The only problem is that some of the um, uh, parents might have a lag in their internet. And so you can't sing together. That's not really possible on Zoom. So what I do is I just mute them all. And so I would sing with my guitar. All the children are muted and they just sing on their own. So they hear me, but I can't hear them. But we still sing together. So for the children, it's really singing together. That works absolutely fine. And so they really love singing, the, the young children. Um, someone asked about the materials. So we sent parents an email before the lesson. We um, kind of assume they have, you know, paper, scissors, glue sticks, and just the normal stuff you would have at home. Yeah, it's kind of assume they have that. And so we send an email and say, you will need um, a bit of yellow paper and um, some paints. And we're always very flexible, you know, so it, it can be any type of paints you have at home and any type of paper. And, and then um, just bring it, make it, have it ready at the start of the lesson so that everything's here. So really important that we always um, tell before what we need. Always also send out materials, for example, now we just did, um, we made lanterns for, for the St. Martin's um, celebration. So I just sent out packs of like flat packs with lanterns they can make and assemble um, on their own. So we sometimes also send out materials they don't have. This is our Kuchen Maya, <laughs> with, with a little bit of help of her um, mom, <laughs> has, um, has made a, a nice um, Geisterschloss, like a castle. So it's Obviously, the parents do lots here as well, but it's just being together as a group and having fun together. I do a lot of baking actually with my um, groups, those who are three to six years old, six year old, and we baked some um, animals. <laughs> so we made dough and everything. And how I do this, I usually just put my laptop on the kitchen table, and then it's like I'm being on TV and doing a cooking program a little bit so i would just show them so everything has to be ready again before the lesson and then i would just tell them now we put the flour in and then the eggs and so on and the parents help and it's um it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of um discussions talking going on so there's language here so we communicate about what we're doing and also i always check if they have done the next step Bef or before we go on to the next step, I make sure everyone has done what they're supposed to do. So I'm always in contact with them at all times. That um, Katya um, did, that was um, the topic of scientists. So she baked all the planets with, with her group. Um, moon phase is here. And again, there's a lot of language involved here. Um, talking about the planets, what are you doing, um, and so on. Um, our sessions run for two hours. We um, so many many of our teachers use the free Zoom, so they would do forty minutes, and then everyone's being thrown out, and so they would just take a short break and then um, come back and do another forty minutes. Um, I have myself because I'm always on Zoom, so I have um, a license. Uh, for the like was it 14 pounds a month or something so my uh, students usually stay on for the full two hours the tiniest children the babies are online for one hour um, our groups we limited them to eight children because um, we feel that we want to keep contact with them and if you have a group of 20 you're losing this individual contact and so um, of course, you, you can have, you know, 20 or more students online, but then it's more like a, a lesson, a lecture nearly, where you show something and they can't interact so much. So for us, it's, it's language and it's a community thing. And so we feel it's important to keep the groups really, really small. What we, we've also noticed that if they have different levels of German, it's really hard to have them in one group. So even more than in our schoolhouse, they need to be kind of the same level. Um, otherwise they get bored or they get, um, it's just not, um, they can't say anything maybe. So I would have them really kind of very, very similar. 
Um, another idea here, they just went outside the children had to collect sticks and made little um, stick men and women here. Um, Sibylle from Cambridge, um, she has got lots of great craft ideas. She's done lots online as well. And this is her Facebook page. And if you go there, you can find um, lots and lots of great ideas for craft activities you can easily do online. She has then actually used the um, Zoom um, record function and has just recorded very short clips and then moved all the dinosaurs here in the picture and in the landscape a little bit. I'm just going to show you that quickly. So she has made an animated um, landscape with the children, um, which was a brilliant project actually, and the, the children really liked, liked doing this, put a lot of effort into it. Um, this is also a case where Katja has done a magician's project online with her students, and she has also used, so she has used the, rec the Zoom recording function to record the children in their homes, and so they um, practiced tricks. So they do tricks. And I'm just showing the first trick. It's spoken in German, but I can translate for you. Oh, sorry. So it's going to let the coin disappear. And it's disappeared. The coin has gone. Yeah, the coin is back. <laughs> just so just magic tricks, but again there's lots of language involved here, explaining the trick um, to the others and lots of um, interaction really between the children as well, um, looking at each other's tricks and commenting and so on. This is a project I'm doing now and I want you to show here that it's very important to have something in your hand. So this is my letter box here, maybe you can see a small window. So for the children, the younger they are, the more important it is to have something here, it's hands on. And it's not just showing them a picture or a PowerPoint presentation, it's actually being here and really talking to them and showing them things. And so with my children, with my Falcon here, we've made letter boxes. So we've been painting them and everything, assembling them. Now they're sending letters to each other and they're actually sending them to each other's home address. And the parents would then put them in this personal letter box and they would then have received letters in their own private letter box and here again lots of language so they would have to write letters and to talk to each other and um, for this this is the list I sent them before the lesson so I said please can you get a cardboard box ready some paints this is what you will need sometimes they print so I sent them um, a thing to print out like a a little thing we put on the letterbox. Um, if they don't have printers, we also send stuff through sometimes. We also made um, stamps for the letterbox. We, this just very quickly now, um, we made fruit cocktails. Again, lots of language involved here. What we put in there, why, how we decorate them. And so this is always a center stage activity, an activity they like to do, a fun activity. But around that, we have got lots of language. We've got grammar, we've got spellings, we've got discussions going on. So it's all about language in the end. And I'm just um, the last two minutes, very quickly, coming to some 
more um, games which are not so hands-on, but um, still fun, maybe for, for the older children. Um, here I've got a football game where, so I usually use the chat. So I would, for example, say, um, what's postbox in German? So they write the, uh, the Briefkasten in the chat and we would have two groups. So whoever gets it right can move the football towards the goal here. Uh, same principle, so whoever gets it right gets a smiley. We've got that the battleship game where they have to shoot, so um, they have to make a sentence, and if it's correct, they can try to shoot my ships here. We've, I've made them, um, that's a connect four, so they have to, here they have to, um, out of, for example, machen to make, they have to say, I have made. Um, so if they get it correct again, they can then um, put a red, um, so if two groups, so they could a red or yellow there. And so here you can see the red team won this one. <laughs> this one, oh, there's lots of snakes and ladder games you can steal online. This is just a, a picture I stole from online. <clears throat> I believe that you will get a copy of everything, absolutely everything in this talk. And I'm also very happy to share the whole PowerPoint with you. So you can use them one to one. So you can use everything as it is here now. And so here we use the um, students would need a die. So they would roll a dice um, on their table. And then I would move um, forward for them. And so here they would have to say Tisch, for example, for, for table. Um, I've, that's, I've made that as well. It's a memory game. So they say, I would like Grau, which is gray. A hard tish, so you need the matching one. You would say, okay, I want the blue one, the blau. And so if match, they get the cards. Again, it's just lots of vocabulary. And so here we'd have all the colors and furniture. Um, and here, so I've used this um, template and then just put the, um, the cards on top. We've done bingos as well for, for the younger children. That's nice, they like that. We also be talking about ourselves a lot. I ask them to show me something. Some children come with their pets and show me their pets or they show me their books they've got at home. And it's actually nice to have them in their home because there's so much they want to share. And um, they always like to talk about what they like and, and what they do. Um, this is not um, just vocabulary practice and just as a very last thing here, I would like to mention Nearport. Maybe some of you know Nearport. Nearport has um, been brilliant for us. It's a teaching software. And I've done, so those are two different screenshots I've made. So the first one, so you would have the whole landscape here is already pre-made. And then you can just put your own questions in there. So this was a race to the top of the mountain. And so I put questions in there and if they get the question right, they can move up one step. And so we had all the students racing at once so they can see where everyone is. And they can see who is, who is at the top first. Um, really, really easy to do. So you just really literally enter your own questions. You can do the same thing here as a quiz, just enter your own questions in your own language and um, answers and um, the program does everything else for you. So really fun, interactive um, things you can do with it. So I think I'll pass um, back to Charlotte now. So I'm just gonna unshare. Okay, thank you very much. I will go back to sharing and then we will see how quick, quickly I can advance the um, PowerPoint. Thank you very much. Uh, there have also been some questions. Um, the Oops. The uh, recording will be available. Let's have a look how this actually formats onto the page. Okay, there's a little bit of a time lag here. Oops, here we are. Uh, okay. Right. Okay, um, I'm <laughs> on the wrong slide, uh, but I can just go through. Uh, 
Oops. Sorry, sorry for that. It does take a little while to go through these. Um, Several people have, have raised the issue of, of whether these things are available. Um, with, there will be a recording of this, uh, of this session, so you can always revisit that. And we've left our contact details so you can contact us and have specific questions. Um, right, so um, moving on to slightly older children, and, and we are just going to rush through this. Um, uh, it's a very powerful function to allow them to um, annotate files, to, to do you know, things themselves, to write on, on a screen or to do some drawings. So here um, with a group of, of um, younger teens, we've read a book and we're doing some uh, you know, text uh, analysis, book analysis. So one of the fun ways to identify uh, you know, a, t a topic of a particular session could be to do hangman game and then you'll find out what the, what the issue is. Um, when, when children are reading a book, you can focus on a particular character and uh, discuss the relationship of that character to mother, father, both parents together or on their own. And as you perhaps read a chapter together, uh, they can then, you can stop and they can then fill in or, or you know, you can fill in on, on their behalf a spider map to visualize those kind of relationships and, and important information. So in this case, um, I have put, filled this in, but you can just as well uh, let them uh, draw a spider web, read through the text, identify issues, you know, distinguish them, uh, practice some, some text writing and also some correction of uh, their writing. So these are very powerful and also uh, you know, quite visually attractive things. It's like, uh, it's all, as though you were standing over people's shoulder, over all of their shoulders at the same time. And uh, you can then take screenshots of the results so you can keep this um, and, and distribute it later on and so on. So really quite, quite a nice um, possibility. You can obviously do all sorts of quizzes and, and questions and answers. They can highlight things. Um, you can also combine it with a podcast or with a with a reading of a chapter or part of a chapter that you've been particularly focusing on and let them fill in identify central information and fill in you know this list of, of aspects that um, is relevant here um, and of course you can fill in um, worksheet specific uh, grammar uh, grammar um, tasks and and you can do it uh, you know so that it's uh, they can they learn this very quickly and and it turns out to be really neat and and easy to uh, use you know filling in those lines is no problem with the annotation function this is just um this is just a copy from you know a sheet that i've uploaded so it's no problem at all to do this and again you know you can do it uh, you can see it in real time um you can talk about um correct writing as well and capital writing capital letters small letters very uh, topical in, in German. Um, here there is a text where they should identify adjectives so uh, you can read this together and they can have a, use a, a highlight function and actually identify um, adjectives you know for everybody to see and you can take turns uh, you can do it in one-to-one -one sessions so again very very nice way to to do those kind of things. Okay, and um, you've been asking questions throughout. We've been really rushing through this and had, have only selected uh, a few of our examples. And I think some of the questions you've been asking, we are going to address now. Uh, Mariana, do you, you want yeah. to share yours again or shall I? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So just a few tips. Very, oh, it's, it's gone. I'll share mine then, yeah? I'm sorry. That's what I understood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so you can see it again, yeah. Um, so yeah, just a few kind of tips in the end from our experience. Um, so 
some children at first um, in our lessons used a phone or an iPad and this is not ideal. So especially with young children, the screen has to be as big as possible just um, to stay in contact with them. So a phone is just too small of a screen to actually see what's going on. And the worksheet Charlotte just showed you, you can't do that on a phone. The iPad has limited um, functionality with Zoom, so you wouldn't be able to do everything you really want to do on an iPad. So we always recommend desktop or laptop. And also we recommend one device per person. We had families with three children on the same iPad and it just doesn't work really. They start arguing and it's all kinds of <laughs> it's not not very good so if possible one device per person it needs to be a desktop or a laptop um we we won't um have bigger groups so we keep really keep to eight um students absolute max just to really make sure there's a a personal connection um here to with those students um, that's, I think that's also why they come back, because we are here for them. It's a group of people and you have got a personal connection to them. Um, the similar level, I've already uh, talked about this. And I think so. There's no right or wrong about how long your lessons should be or um, shouldn't be. I feel comfortable doing two hours online with, uh, with my children. Some teachers feel comfortable with, with one hour. Um, so I think whatever works for you, we feel that the 40 minutes Zoom sessions are a good natural um, kind of limit. So that you would do 40 minutes a break and then maybe another 40 minutes. Um, and then one more tip here to stay flexible. All kinds of things can happen. Um, we always have the phone numbers of all the parents um, nearby. So if some a person loses sound or image or something happens with the connection, we can always get in touch by phone quickly with everyone. Um, so what we found also since March really, it's kept Zoom has really, really kept our community going. Everyone was still, or nearly everyone was still taking part. Um, so we could keep teaching any time through all lockdowns and everything. We also uh, could involve students who um, before um, online teaching were just too far away. They couldn't come to Leicester. So now they suddenly could. We've got students from Kathmandu who joined because they used to be connected to us. And so anyone can join now who, who would like to. We also found the parents are more involved because they're really here when we have lessons and they see what we're doing, they help. And it's nice to have them so close. Um, we had some teachers then running lessons from Germany because maybe they went to, in the summer, they went to Germany and just teach their lessons from Germany. So you can do your lessons anytime, anywhere, which can be a really big advantage. Um, and also there's the recording function so students could even watch the lesson after you've, you've done it recorded. So for us, I think it's been extremely positive. And also with the new online Saturday school, I think we only had really positive feedback and um, it's, it's running really well. Charlotte, did we, um, shall we answer some questions now? Or maybe, can I, um, I'll just give you my, um, this is my German Academy um, email address I put in the chat. So this is me, um, if you want to, um, you know, talk about specific things or my templates for those games or so, you can always just email me quickly and I can email you um, um, those games or templates, whatever you, you want. So we can ask, um, uh, we can answer the questions from the question and answer, Charlotte, maybe? Yeah, um, I've, I've answered some of them. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Mayanne, do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so I can see a question here. How can students watch recordings? Um, so there is, there are two options. So either it's stored on uh, the Zoom cloud or it's stored on your computer. And as you say, um, it was Donovan McGrath asked, asked these questions. So, um, it's very, very big. So it's the recording is going to be many, many gigabytes. So you can't really send it by email, but you can, for example, store it on Google Drive and send a link 
or you can um, sort of send the link to the cloud recording. Um, so you can only send a link to it. You can't really send send the whole recording. A related question, Mayana, above, have you asked all parents to be able to record the lessons? Um, so we are not recording our lessons because, so we, we thought of that first and then we realized that it's just so many gigabytes of, of um, storage space it needs and it was it's really awkward it, it takes hours literally to upload them somewhere so we are not recording any lessons but we have noticed that there's no children missing <laughs> because so some yeah. of them are maybe on holiday they're in the park but they're still in our lesson so we, we literally have no absent absent children in our lessons and um so we don't we don't record sessions um, if you record them, you need to password, password protect them. So you can't upload them anywhere public, but you'll have to upload them, for example, on your um, password protected Google Drive account, where only the parents have access to them um, who, whose children were in the lesson. So don't make it public anywhere, you know, just keep it really private. Yes, another question. How do you incorporate your slides into Zoom? You just use a um, share screen and that could, that, that could involve PowerPoint slides, that could involve um, Word files, any, anything, PDFs, absolutely, completely versatile. And you can write on, you know, by using annotation, you can write on all of those. So uh, very, very versatile in this respect. Um, you can post a video on YouTube, yes, but you have uh, data protection issues here, as Mayana just uh, described. Um, copy of the slides available online. We have to, we have to um, see how, how we go about this. The session is recorded, so you can have access to the session. Um, do you have exams? Yes, we are preparing uh, students for exams as well. As you know, uh, this year exams are going to be slightly different. It's not entirely decided yet, so, um, but um, it's absolutely possible to uh, prepare uh, pupils for GCSE exams or A-level exams in this way. No problem at all. Can I say something to someone asked about safeguarding? Mm -hmm. so, um, for us so it's just so of course you have to safeguard your children at any time and the teacher who runs the session really has the responsibility so most of our teachers are trained in safeguarding and if they're in the classroom or if they're in a zoom room is kind of it's just where they are and they still do the safeguarding so i don't record sessions online so that we all can see what happens because I'm not walking into their classroom either in the schoolhouse because I trust them. They're professional teachers, they've got safeguarding training. And if something happens in their lesson, they're concerned about, they're coming to me as a school head or um, so we, we find solutions. So they know how to act, what to do. Um, so there's no, um, so it's, it's fine if I think I trust my teachers to, to be professional teachers and do the right steps if they need to. In the worst, if the worst comes to the worst, you can always just interrupt the session for everyone. You can also throw people out. Um, so you've got a lot of power to decide who is in the lesson and how, how do they behave. Yes, so there, there are lots of answers and um, particular, and, and as we said at the beginning, you can get in touch with us. You can just Google um, Association of German Saturday Schools and you'll come to our website and there is an email address on that and you'll reach us directly with, with any additional questions. And some of those questions that you've, uh, topics that you're uh, asking now do have to do with safeguarding and so on. So I would, um, and we haven't discussed this in detail, we have obviously got permissions from all the materials that we have used. So um, I, I can only refer you back to the National Resource Center uh, details where all these things are described in great detail. Uh, let me use this opportunity. I think we have to uh, stop at this point. 
I would like to um, thank everybody, uh, all of you who've come along, large, uh, pop, large group, 250 people, that's absolutely fantastic. I would like to uh, thank all the teachers who've been involved and who've been um, uh, giving us and making you know, their ideas available to everybody and, uh, and obviously to the children involved as well. And um, we are always interested in, in interacting with all of you. So again, you know, do please get in touch if you've got questions, if you find that you know, we can work together, we can think about organizing um, workshops and, and training sessions, all those kind of things are possible. So use this opportunity. Thanks for coming. And I think at this point we have to stop this session uh, because the, the room will be occupied in due course. Bye bye now and thanks very much. Vielen Dank. Auf Wiedersehen.